Hey, I'm Michael Hoff with Digital Theologian, and today I'm going to give you three reasons why I don't read the King James Bible anymore, and you probably shouldn't either. And before I go tearing down what might be your favorite translation of the Bible, I'm going to stop and acknowledge that it is beautiful language. It is poetic. It is elegant. I love the way that it sounds. I even have had professors over the years say, look, you should not read the 23rd Psalm in anything other than the King James at a funeral. And you know what? They might be right. But before we consider that this is our daily driver translation or the only translation we're using, there are some things that we need to consider. Now, the King James has had more impact on the English language than even Shakespeare. Phrases that we use all the time, like, don't let the sun go down on your anger, turn the other cheek, the grapes of wrath, east of Eden, as the sparks fly upward, things like that that get thrown around uh, from time to time in literary circles especially. I know I'm not always quoting the KJV, uh, and uh, for some of you, this may not even be relevant, but... There are a lot of phrases that show up throughout our common language that we don't even know trace back to the King James Version of the Bible. And for that, I am incredibly thankful. I am thankful that the Bible was translated into an authorized version in English, which meant that unlike the people who came before this authorized translation that got burned at the stake, these translators actually got to be celebrated and this version was official which is great because it meant people could read the Bible in English and didn't have to go back to Latin or Greek or Hebrew. And that is something that I can celebrate. But that was in 1611, not in the 2020s. The first reason that I don't read the King James is that I don't speak 1611 English anymore. And if you've done any kind of reading in the past, like even going back to Lord of the Rings and getting bogged down with all of Tolkien's descriptive language or the poems, why so many poems, or you go back even further to Last of the Mohicans or Shakespeare, it becomes difficult to understand the language itself, and the way that the words are being used, the way they're being strung together, my goodness, even phrases like far out, or tubular, or gnarly, these are words that are so chuggy. I, what? Did I say that right? I'm old. I'm, I'm, they're grays. I don't know cool words anymore. It's in the 2020s, and I'm still stuck in the 90s. Like, if the Ninja Turtles didn't say it, I might not understand it. So... 1611 English is a far cry from the way that we use language now. The 70s had their phrases, the 80s had theirs, the 90s, 2000s, and 2020s are all having theirs. And so some of those things are pretty cool and get picked up and maybe overused as awesome as they are moving forward. But there are some things that are lost in the meaning of time as we use language differently, some words even go on to mean the exact opposite of what they meant in the original. So it's challenging for us to pick up the Bible that is 400 years old in that language and try to understand exactly what words meant in their original context because our own language has changed so much. So if you've been reading the King James since you were four, and now you're in your 70s, I'm not arguing that you should change the Bible you're reading. But language isn't the only thing to consider. The second reason I don't read the King James Version is, you know, it's not the original authorized version. Wait a second. Now, there are lots of arguments online saying 1611 is the original authorized English version. That means it has the stamp of approval from God. But... In the West, the original authorized version is in Latin. It's the Vulgate. So if you want to get the original authorized version, the version that was passed down in the church in the West, then you have to read the Vulgate. You've got to learn Latin. But I mean, if you're going to learn Latin, should you maybe not just go ahead and stop and go even farther back? and learn Greek and Hebrew, the languages that it was originally written in? 
You could learn Greek and Hebrew and Aramaic. And believe it or not, there are schools in most cities in the United States that are still teaching this. So if you wanted to go in person, you can probably find a place near you that is teaching Greek or Hebrew. And thank goodness, there's this crazy thing that's called the internet. And in the internet, we can get access to people all over the world. It's amazing. That was over the top, was and Yeah, that was, that was too much. The internet, you know what it is, because you're watching this on the internet. Without going into the history of exactly how we have the scriptures in our hands today, let's just say that Latin was the original authorized version in the West, and if you want before that, you've got to go back to ancient Greek, and you can still learn those languages, which is amazing, but... I recognize most of us don't have time to do it, so we're better off picking up a Bible that's in a language we can read. And for most of us, 1611 English just isn't that. And the third reason why I don't read the King James anymore is because it's not the best translation. It's not built on the documents that are closest to the time of Jesus and the Old Testament that we have available. I thank God for archaeology, but in this case, I can thank God for a shepherd boy who lost some goats and decided to chuck rocks into caves to try to find him. And uh, he was around the Dead Sea in Israel. He was chucking rocks back into caves in the hillside, and he heard some pottery shatter. And when he heard that, he went in to investigate. And what was contained in these caves was the library of a group of people that lived near the northern end of the Dead Sea. And in this city of Qumran, there was a library. And uh, this library contained uh, copies of every book of the Old Testament with the exception of Esther. And that moved all of them 1,000 years closer to the original than the documents that were used to translate the King James Version. If I had a choice between a Bible from 1000 AD and one from around the time of Jesus, I'm going to choose the Bible that came from around the time of Jesus rather than the one that's a thousand years newer. I'm going to get as close to the source as I can, and I recommend you do the same. So that means you probably need to set aside your King James and your new King James Bibles because neither of them are built on the foundation of the Dead Sea Scrolls and any of the newer archaeology that we have available. And so while I love the tradition of the King James and its beautiful language, I can't recommend that you read it anymore as your primary Bible. If you've been reading it since you were a kid, by all means, don't stop reading it. But please pick up a newer Bible something that's been translated since the 1970s that uses the Dead Sea Scrolls and read that as your primary Bible study tool and then use the King James as a point of reference, as a devotional reader, and I hope you have an amazing day.